11 Amiga Presents. A play giant video review. Sit back and get by the show. Amiga play guide and review. This time we'll be taking a look at the 1988 3D flight simulator FA18 Interceptor, created by IntelliSoft and published by Electronic Arts. When we first begin the game, we must enter our name, in this case, I'm using the call sign Maverick, and here's the main title menu. From here, we can choose to view a demo, to have a free flight around the 3D world. We can train or select the missions. By pressing number 8 there we can also view a flight log of our statistics and this is my current flight log. These will be saved to disk as we play the game. But when we first enter the world of FA-18 Interceptor we must qualify for the missions and this requires a degree of training. So let's press number 3 and see a demo of that training and figure out what it's all about. Here you can see me entering a code from a code wheel which came from the game. This is actually a crack, so that's not going to make any difference. And here's the brief. All we have to do to qualify is to pull off a series of intricate maneuvers and by following the training instructor there in his F-16, we can follow his maneuvers and he will demonstrate how to pull off different roles and split S and different maneuvers, uh, brake turns, that kind of thing. As you can see already from this basic demo running on a stock Amiga A500, the graphics are smooth and the frame rates are smooth enough to create a very realistic 3D flight experience. And don't forget this was released in 1988, the same year as Super Hang On, and after Burner we carved up the arcade market and you didn't really get any 3D flight simulators in the arcade and at the time PCs, the 386s of their day, could only just barely cope with these kind of graphics so on a stock Amiga 500 many people were surprised by the speed and the frame rates that this game could throw out back then and I certainly appreciate that things have moved on a step since then but it was certainly a massive step into a brave new world of flight simulators. In fact, many people said this could not be done on the Amiga. This game was impossible to create on the Amiga, and yet they achieved it. Back in 88, I still had a Commodore 64, so to see these graphics on a friend's machine literally blew me away from the 8-bit era. Suddenly, 16-bit was here and here to stay. Having studied our flight manoeuvres, it's time to practice what we've just seen and it's a good idea to practice before we even attempt to qualify because certainly qualification in this game is very difficult and it requires patience and understanding of basic flight dynamics. In this training session, we must take off behind the lead aircraft and you can see the blurb there explains that if you press S you can enable smoke from the rear of that F-16 so that your F-18 can follow that and all you have to do is to take off behind that thing and hopefully follow its maneuvers. To begin we can press F-8 to bring our thrust up to 80%. This will start our engines and we can taxi down the runway as soon as our knots, you can see the knots there building up, as soon as they are over 150, 160, 
we can pull back on the controller or press the down arrow key and that will lift our nose and we can gently rise into the air. The length of this runway is surprisingly long and so even if we don't make the airspeed straight away we can increase the airspeed if we choose by pressing F9 or F10 and that will increase our thrust so I'm just trying to keep up with that guy at the moment I'm going to increase my thrust to 90% and now I'm going to reduce it back to 80 from the basic cockpit view we can also press enter to see our external views and pressing keys 1 through to 9 on the keypad will manoeuvre the external camera around our vehicle we can also use an internal camera as we shall see later on irrespective of whether you can see the craft or not there will be a message at the bottom of the screen which pops up to instigate a manoeuvre and if you complete that manoeuvre to the computer's satisfaction then you will be prompted for another maneuver and after six or seven of those maneuvers then the computer will say you have qualified that's certainly the hardest part in the game and the best part in the game is simply to free fly around the landscape and take in the scenery so let's get on with doing just that at any stage even if we have not qualified we can press key number two and that will give us a free flight around this extensive 3d flight simulator world and that will not give us any enemies but at least we can get used to the flight controls and the dynamics of this game as soon as we begin free flights we must yet again enter the code from the wheel and we get to choose one of four locations the first location number one is san francisco international airport number two is oakland international number three is moffett federal airfield and number four is the USS Enterprise, which is anchored 20 miles offshore. The Enterprise is an aircraft carrier, and as you'll see, there's only one plane on the aircraft carrier, and that's us. So we are ready to take off in our F-18. All we need to do is to press F-10, and that will give us 100% thrust. And then pressing F-10 again will instigate the afterburner. That will mean 100% is lit up there, you can see underlined. Now pressing the G key, we can raise our undercarriage. And you can see that raising there from different angles. And the sound of this thing on full afterburners, even for its day, is tremendous. We can take a look at the underview there and overview. We can view our cockpit from different angles and rotate our head we can also look above and below our view and uh, the below view is good for the bombing rooms as we shall see later on uh, look at this the Mega 500 only just coping with these advanced physics traveling at tremendous high speed in this game if by some miracle you do manage to qualify then it's on to the main missions only six missions in FA-18 Interceptor, only six. So let's check out number one, it's a visual confirmation mission and that means all we have to do is to fly out there and identify an aircraft. As soon as we have done that we can return and land. It doesn't really matter which aircraft we choose but choosing the FA-18 Interceptor is the one with two rear wings there you can see aloft there at the rear of the machine and to my mind the interceptor is the better of the two machines so here we are again san francisco international let's put that turbo on there that full afterburner and take off you can see there this thing is running on the mega 3000 25 megahertz and already the frame rate has jumped up highly noticeably from what we had on the mega 500 our Amiga 3000 is also equipped with one megabyte of RAM and that will mean extra buildings, extra sound effects and the music that you heard over the title sequence and as we fly over San Francisco that's Alcatraz you can see in the bay and the Golden Gate Bridge there and I just landed on the water trying to get an underview of 
that bridge. Yes, you can fly under the bridge, and that's probably the first thing that most users try to do in this game. And it's relatively easy. But yes, you can land in the water by some bug in the game. Those are the two pilots that we must try to investigate. Those two shadows on the map. By pressing the R key, we can change our radar in the very center of the screen from a 40 mile readout, a 10 mile readout, or a 2 mile readout. So we can have close, far, and extra far radar. And you have confirmed the enemy signature. That means we can now return to base. One of the important aspects of this game is you don't have to fight and you don't have to fire unless you really have to do in this game. One of the key codes of FA Interceptor is do not fire unless fired upon. So by flying around here the enemy may fire upon us and that gives us the excuse to blow them away. Otherwise we can simply land and return to the airfield where we began. So that's precisely what I'm attempting to do all after burners and the enemy may follow us and may attempt to attack and as I say it gives you the choice you don't have to blow those guys down and at this stage it's easy enough to just fly out there navigate your way to the pilots and retreat you can see at the bottom of the screen there it is identified the pilots as a MiG-29 at an altitude of 5,000 feet there are two MiGs flying around our vicinity and by pressing the T key we can alter the target and can track those guys all over the map. So this is me returning to SF International. All we need to do is to reduce the speed down to 60% thrust usually and we can press the G key to lower our gear and we can press the DEL key, the delete key and that will instigate the air brake and that is now on but unfortunately I ran out of runway and I'm, I'm going to have to switch off my air brake and try that again. It is possible to land at any speed and as long as you make contact with that runway there and press the F1 key to gear down to 10% thrust straight away and F1 again to switch the engines off then you can land in a relatively short space in fact, if you can do that on an aircraft carrier, then you can certainly do that on a lengthy runway such as this. So here we go again, reduce the thrust down to 50%, air brakes on, and here we go for a landing. Fortunately, I forgot to lower my landing gear, and you can see I crashed, but it has refueled and rearmed me without my gear down, and I have completed the mission. Pressing the number 6 key from the main menu will give us a list of the missions which we can select. In this case I'm going to press F2 to select our second mission. This is called Emergency Defence and here we have to protect Air Force One, that's the President's plane, we have to protect that thing against a number of raiders. The plane has been damaged and it is coming down to land at San Francisco International. So we have to shadow that plane and do not fire unless fired upon. You can see the white dot on the radar screen there is the Air Force One. That's the plane that we need to find. And actually that's the green dot if I press R to change the radar. It is now behind us. So let's turn around and let's find Air Force One. If we press the T key we should be able to lock onto that target. It will also give us the altitude. There we go, 18,000 feet, so that's actually above where we are. And there it is, that's Air Force One. If we should decide to, we can arm our missiles by pressing the Enter key. And if we choose to launch a missile, we can do that with the spacebar. There are two types of missile in the game. The AMRAMs, which are basically air-to-air -air missiles. And there are two Sidewinders as well, which is another air-to-air -air missile. All the missiles are heat seeking, so you can see the diamond reticule and the noise, which makes a loud noise when you've locked on there. And when the target is locked on, you can press the space bar and blow that out of the sky. Unfortunately, we've just blown up the president's plane, but luckily he was not on board, which begs the question why we had to defend that thing in the first place. But nevertheless, let's try that mission again. This time, instead of blowing up Air Force One, let's take on the bandits. And 
this stage there is just the one enemy aircraft and there can be up to four enemy aircraft on the screen at any one time and the enemy AI is surprisingly well done in this game they will track you all over the map and they will fire missiles on target luckily if you press the C key if they have a missile locked on you that will drop chaff or if you press the F key that will drop flares in the way of their missiles and you should be able to avoid their missiles using those maneuvers you can also take evasive action they are heat seeking missiles so as long as you don't have full afterburners on then they shouldn't be able to lock on as easily which is a tip to remember let's switch from the 40 mile radar because we are actually quite close to that bandit and on the 40 mile radar well it's a bit too close to make that thing out press the T key to switch to that target and we can see it is 600 knots and 22,000 feet so we just need to raise up and take a look in the sky there and we might be able to track that thing down that's actually the carrier so you can see that that thing is hightailing it towards the carrier but it's actually making its way towards the airport so now that is in the center of the screen we can hear the reticule we can see that moving there that means we are locked on and as soon as you see it in the range appearing there in the heads up display we can fire a missile and all that up having done so eventually the president's plane will land and we will gain a congratulations and that is that mission completed we can press shift plus escape together and that will return us back to the main menu but in this case we have seen another bogey so let's take that out enemies can appear at random and they can appear on your map just like that so it's easy enough if you have the missiles to spare to track that thing down to go after another satisfying kill most of the enemy raiders will negotiate their way down towards the carrier area so if you fly around the carrier you can usually be guaranteed to fall into those guys and pick them off the main weapon of attack is the air-to-air -air missile and there is also a chain gun as well the Vulcan chain gun is not very good it has to be said it fires 500 rounds but unless you have no missiles left, I would certainly recommend not using the chain gun because it is really weedy. Another aspect of FA-18 Interceptor is the fact that we must land ourselves on the carrier, which is really tricky. And if you thought landing on tarmac on the runway was difficult, then think again. Landing on the carrier in this game is an art and it's actually a science which you have to master in order to get through the later levels if we start on the carrier then we must land and return to the carrier so that is what we are attempting to do for this we must fly above the hard deck which is 145 feet if you fly above that then you'll be fine and if you fly below that then obviously you'll crash into the back of it I tend to fly to the rear of the carrier and try to land the thing the legitimate way although sometimes you can get away with flying forwards and landing on the front of the carrier as we shall see later on and so I'm just flying out there and if you press the rudder keys the rudder keys are the comma and the full stop and so if you press those you can use the tail rudders to rudder that thing around into the right direction and let's just line ourselves up there you can see the thrust is on 40% the brake is on and I crashed unfortunately that's so easy to do you have to press the brake and to land that thing on the carrier get the airspeed right and everything perfect otherwise you've basically written off your chances mission 3 is relatively easy so let's move on to the next mission this is mission 4 and in this mission we must search a downed pilot and rescue him unfortunately search and rescue is another very tricky mission mainly because launching the rescue pod in the first place is very tricky indeed you have 
have to press the shift key and F together and if your shift key isn't working then you'll find that you are simply launching flares and nothing is happening. But the downed pilot is on the island directly in front of the carrier and so you can see me heading towards him now and he's on the radar. Let's align that green dot up there on the radar and if you press the zoom keys which is the square brackets keys you can zoom in and out and you can zoom in and out of the map and the hood using the zoom keys so that's handy the pilot is actually on an island directly beneath us so if we just do a barrel roll there that's the island that i'm talking about and he's directly below us let's just fly down there and take a closer look pilot will always crash in the same spot in front of the island so as long as you are quick off the mark from that carrier then it should be a simple matter of flying out there and pressing shift F to launch the rescue pod but there are two MiGs in the area as you can see those MiGs will fire upon us if we don't complete that mission quickly enough and they will blow us out of the sky if we should make a mistake so let's just drop down we're at 6,000 feet there and i'm just trying to locate our downed pilot so that we can get a better idea of where we are and look at that a mig has popped up in front of us and because we did not have the t selected then the target was on the pilot our downed pilot so even though that thing popped up on our screen it didn't pop up on the automatic tracking of the missiles now it has now we can press enter and space and away it goes that's one less to worry about of all the missions perhaps mission four is the most infuriating mission three is a walkover compared to mission four because that downed pilot there he is is really difficult to rescue because you have to land the rescue pod within 100 meters of him and see I flew directly over him this is me directly from the carrier and here you can see I pressed the button and did it work did it land within 100 meters you can see it floating down there and when it lands next to him there it goes unfortunately too far from the downed pilot and look at that they are virtually adjacent to each other and yet that was too far away so if we do it here and quickly fly above that mountain there so they don't have a quick crash landing into that thing hopefully now if we turn that thing around we can see the rescue pod and the downed pilot are virtually parallel to each other and that should mean that we are close enough to complete the mission now just the small problem of landing on the carrier by pressing the a key we can drop our arrestor hook and that should snag onto the flexible hoses which are on the back of that carrier the flexible um, bungee ropes there which we can snag onto and it will also uh, help us attach to that carrier so pressing the air brake on and off with the delete key and we still have the arrestor hook down there which will make sure that we stop bang on target and we can also increase the thrust by pressing the plus key which will increase the thrust by one percent each time you can see i'm increasing it there and as soon as it hits the ten percent we shall move we can instigate a very rapid turning circle there on the carrier and we can even reverse the airplane if we press the minus key we can actually put that thing into reverse and utilize that but at the moment we are refueled and rearmed we were not close enough it turns out to complete the mission so well that's how you do that not very easy at all mission five is actually very easy all you have to do is to blow up a cruise missile and follow that thing into san francisco and mission six is a sub carrier mission where a number of aircraft will launch from an enemy sub and the player must blow those up and if they blow up the conning tower of the enemy sub as well that's the weak point of the enemy sub and once all the aircraft have taken off from the carrier and the player has blown up the conning tower then they can land and that's mission complete and that's game over it wouldn't have taken them too long to program more missions and it really is a shame that there are no more generic missions in the game 
but because the training is so difficult, by the time the player gets this far, they are just simply glad to be able to complete the game. And so this is Interceptor playing on the old 60, the new 4000 old 60, 25 megahertz, and the frame rates have jumped up yet again. This game was coded by Bob Dinneman, who also designed most of this game. Bob began in the arcades working for Bally Midway, producing the game Discs of Tron for the arcades in 1983, and then he moved on to the Amiga. This game was also designed by Moses May, who also helped Bob Dinneman with technicalities, and the music that was created by Dave Warhol, that uh, Top Gun remix. In fact, Bob Dinneman specifically asked Dave to create a very Top Gun-esque sound for this game, and Top Gun came out in 1986. Dave Warhol created the music for many games in 1988 for Electronic Arts, including The Bard's Tale 2, having already created the music for Bard's Tale 1 in 1986. He also worked on Sky Fox 2 World Tour Golf, and he went on to work on Hard Nova in 1991. Although there is no music in the game itself, the sound effects are tremendously well done, and with full roar of the engines behind the player, they certainly appreciate the speed and the power of an F-18 see the buildings there fly very smoothly and the graphics are very smooth given a decent CPU. It's a pity that the groundwork on this game was more detailed but don't forget this was created so many years before polygon graphics really took over the world and became the norm. Outside of space simulators this game also boasts a massive 10,000 square feet range and that was one of the largest maps in existence. That figure has been overtaken recently with the Lord of the Rings and the Guild Wars games. Considering Cess Drive Unlimited is only 600 square miles, Just Cause 2 is 400 square miles, and games like Grand Theft Auto are only 16 square miles. In fact, Grand Theft Auto 3 was only 3 square miles. So to have a 10,000 square mile game is certainly massive. The playability is also there in spades and this game really does have a character of its own. There is an atmosphere, a kind of omnipresent atmosphere to this game. It feels like you versus the world and it certainly is. The world feels empty but at the same time these fully filled polygon graphics were certainly revolutionary in their day and you can see waves and grass and that kind of thing so I think they did a tremendous job it reminds me of the mercenary series and a few more buildings on there wouldn't have hurt but apart from that I think the programmer Bob Dinneman did a tremendous job every landmark is depicted accurately and we get to play four airports and one carrier plus one sub and yes I have managed to land on the sub at the end of the game refuel and rearm and take off again and this is probably the only game in the world which also features the electronic arts headquarters out there in Silicon Valley and you can use that to fly around and to get an accurate representation of that area but what I like to do and what most people like to do as soon as they see the EA building is to target that thing and use that as target practice so there it is let's just fly around and get the weapons handy and see if we can't blow that thing up so yes there are no vehicles in this game there are no cars or other things to blow up you can't blow up any of the buildings and crashing into the buildings does nothing but if you fire your missiles at least you can use those as target practice damn missed really good to see smoke trails coming off those missiles as well let's just try again damn well down to one more missile i don't think we're going to make it with one missile let's just use this opportunity to glide over this road and hightailing it over roads and bridges at 
very very fast speeds and never gets boring and you can't land on any of these roads you'll just disappear through that landscape and crash into the water so hit detection is a problem still as i say high speed over the landscape never gets boring and the atmosphere in this game and the immense sound effects are really terrific taking a look at the scores the 1991 re-release got 84 percent in amiga action commodore computing gave this 8 out of 10 amiga user international gave this 8 out of 10 commodore user gave it 9 out of 10 zero gave it 90 percent and Amiga Computing actually gave this 96%, hailing it as the greatest Amiga game ever. I think it has certainly stood the test of time. I love the little details in this game, and all the little bits under the hood which you can't see. And if play gets too boring, the player can always press Shift and E, and that will eject the pilot, and they will float down to Earth. actually a very good representation of somebody floating down to earth in a parachute. So thank you for viewing my playthrough guide and review of the 1988 3D Flight Simulator Classic FA-18 Interceptor. See you again for another review sometime soon. Cheers.